This is a short guide to signal flow through an analog desk in a live sound setting. Using the Soundcraft MH3 desk, located at Perth College UHI. The signal enters the desk through the connected input, where it goes through the mic preamp at the very top of the channel strip. Next, it passes through the EQ or equalisation section. On the Soundcraft MH3, this is a semi-parametric EQ. Before moving on to the auxiliary send section, which allow us to send a copy of the signal to effects and other processing units. They also send a tailored mix to the on-stage monitors. That's followed by the channel pan pot. And finally, the channel fader, which determines the amount of signal to be sent to the front of house monitors through the stereo left and right output. While we would normally plug any inputs from the stage box into the channel's XLR inputs, today we're going to be plugging the left and right jack outputs of a mini jack to jack cable into the line inputs of channels 1 and 2 to use a mobile phone as a sound source. Due to problems with the channels, we ended up using channels 22 and 23 instead. To connect our main front of house monitors, we're going to plug the XLR cables that run to them into the mix left and right outputs on the back of the desk. After setting our channel faders to infinity gain, which is 0 dB, we can then bring up the stereo master faders, and we should be able to hear the output from the front of house monitors. The effects rack contains graphic EQs, compressors, gates and limiters, and reverb and other effects units. We are going to connect a compressor to an individual channel. To illustrate what you would do if you wished to add a compressor to an individual instrument. To apply the compressor to channel 1, we're going to take the jack labelled 1 and plug it into the channel Insert Send. We're also going to take the cable with the jack connector labelled 2 and plug it into the channel Insert Return. This will send the entire channel signal through the compressor and back in through the return, where it'll then move to the stereo output bus. On the back of the compressor, we take the corresponding jack connector labelled 1, carrying signal from the desk, and connect it to channel 1 input. The jack connector labelled 2, we plug into the output of channel 1. This returns the compressed signal back to the desk. We're going to send signal to a reverb unit by using the XLR output for auxiliary 3. To do this, we plug the XLR connector, labelled 2, we're using a different wiring loom, into the socket labelled auxiliary 3. On the back of the reverb unit, we take the jack connector at the other end of the cable, labelled 2 in, and plug it into the left input on the back of the reverb unit. To send the wet reverb signal back to the desk, we're going to use the jack connector labelled 2 out left, and two out right. These are connected to the left and right outputs on the back of the reverb unit. The FX return two left and right jacks are then connected to the line inputs left and right on a suitable stereo channel. This combines the left and right signals to be controlled on a single fader. Dry signal. I'm going to pop up reverb. Pull out the dry signal. It's important to note that the meters you can see beside the faders 
are metering how much signal is coming into the desk, not how much you're sending out. When trying to decide whether to use an analog or digital desk for live sound work, there are a few important differences between the two formats that you might want to think about. The first of these is price. An analog desk will generally set you back more money than a digital desk. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, size and weight. Due to the sheer amount of electronic components, analog consoles are generally much bigger, bulkier and heavier than their digital alternatives. To give an example of size comparison, these pictures of the Behringer X32 and X32C, which stands for compact, show just how much smaller the digital desks are in comparison to the analog desk we've been using. Many digital desks now have onboard dynamics and effects processors built in. Whereas on an analog desk, these are external and are required to be patched in. Analog desks generally have removable components such as channel strips and faders in order to be repaired or replaced. Whereas any faults with a digital desk often have to be repaired by a specialist. Many people believe the sound quality of an analog desk to be superior to that of digital. However, digital desks in recent times are beginning to catch up. It's simply down to your individual needs and requirements as a live sound engineer.